I have a theory. There's a huge possibility that whatever you dislike that your mate is doing, you are probably doing a very similar thing in a different fashion. For example, my spouse doesn't spend any time with me. Well, I may also may not be giving any accessibility, any availability to my spouse. My theory also applies in conversation. Now, there may be someone that you're conversing with that stays ready to respond, ready to challenge what you have said, ready to argue. You also may increase your voice as you're talking to them. You may cut them off while they're still talking. My theory is whatever you dislike in your mate, you may be doing a similar thing you may dislike how the other person dismisses the severity of your complaints, how they belittle your experiences and are often condescending when they speak with you. You may be oblivious to how you ask a minimum of 21 questions in each conversation, how you often are distracted and often daydream while the other person is talking. Now, my theory may already have a name for it in the social sciences, but again, it is whatever you dislike that your partner is doing, you may also be doing in a different fashion. Now, since you've watched this long, I'd like to leave some bonuses for you. Now, the bonuses are gonna be great responses on how to not do the behaviors in the previous two examples. Now, in the first example, I said, my husband wasn't spending any time with me. That may be easier than we plan if he is open to you coming to him in conversation and pointing out to him, this can be selfish if we immerse ourselves in TV, phone, and not cut it off immerse ourselves in the presence of wife and children and whatever they're already occupy, do, occupying their time with. I said, I, as the wife, am making myself in, uh, unavailable and inaccessible. A lot of times, husbands and wives don't even spend their leisure time in the same room, under the same roof. The further I am away from my spouse, I, the more inaccessible I am. My spouse can just get up and come to me wherever I am in the house. This is true. However, in many relationships, where the husband or the wife is in their home is usually assigned to whether or not they are busy or free. So if you are positioned in a particular place in the house, where you normally position yourself, you are communicating that you are busy or free. I am unavailable when I am looking at my laptop, at my desktop, or writing scripts for my YouTube channel. I am available if I'm at least visible. Be seen by your spouse. In the second example I listed, talking over the other person, increasing the volume in your voice, and not allowing the other person to finish their sentences. Like many behaviors, these can be oblivious to the person that's doing these behaviors. So catching the other person in the act sometimes is the best way to bring it to their attention. However, if you are a harsh person, as far as like how you come off, this is not the best way to go. Waiting until they finish would be the best demonstration of what you would prefer while you are talking. Keep this in mind. It is a gift to give the listener the opportunity to be heard. Give the gift consistently and often. I also listed dismissing and condescending. Sometimes, even in the face of being in oblivion, 
The listener needs to have their name on your situation. So tell your story again with the listener's name on it. Then as you are telling your story, they may be able to get the perspective of the severity of your situation, what you experienced. Then I listed constant questioning. Sometimes that's just the way people need to understand the the person who's talking. If you can kindly suggest that the person that does like asking a lot of questions, if they can hold off their questions until the very end, then there's a possibility that many of their questions will be answered. Does this theory include forms of abuse, such as financial, emotional, verbal, and even physical abuse? Now, I am still in that relationship that was marked by physical abuse for a time period. Verbal abuse for a time period and financial abuse for a time period. After it was made aware to me that I too was contributing to the verbal abuse, I was so oblivious, but it was made aware to me that although I uh, did not do any name calling, the way that I was um, extremely critical and judging and um, unforgiving, I came from a home that was very unforgiving and we um, made sure that you would um, be aware of the offense that you did against us um, for all the days of your life. Um, and, uh, very harsh in nature and all my jokes were at the expense of others. And I was super skilled in being able to start an argument at the drop of a dime, not to mention to, not to mention being, um, just taking pride in wanting to defend myself and show how I was very open to starting a physical fight. Because a large amount of my family members and uh, many of my friends shared the same characteristics as I did, having a spouse that pointed out my characteristics as negative made no sense to me. And I let him know that and everyone else all the time. I may not have done the financial or the physical abuse and intentionally, but I intentionally, um, no, I I wasn't aware of what I was doing. I was really oblivious and I could only see his faults. And, um, um, it is at that time very I was very verbally abusive and not in his style which is just to name call but in my style my style which is to be very rude contrite and um, just breaking hearts and souls and spirits <laughs> um, and emasculating that was my style and it is only because of the Holy Spirit now that um, that I still have that within me, but I am able to um, actually feel um, that um, an attitude coming on. I, I can feel the heat of anger or disdain of someone, and I can actually detest that um, desire to go back in those ways and verbally, um, uh, just anything that is anti edification. And so, um, my theory is that whatever we dislike in our mate and our spouse and our partner, there is a large chance, big chance that we are doing a similar thing in a different fashion. Thank you for watching this video up until this time. I would love to read your comments about what you think about this theory and let me know the name for it in psychology and sociology or whichever. And 
share what you dislike about your partner, but you actually find yourself doing the same or similar thing in a different fashion. This is Healing Empowered, and thank you for watching. Bye.